Now we move on to the third type of passive transport called osmosis. To understand the mechanism of osmosis, let us view this animation. Imagine there is a container which is having a partition made up of a semi-permeable membrane. The compartment A is concentrated, having more solutes. The compartment B is having less solutes, so it is diluted. In that scenario, the solvent particle move from a diluted area into the concentrated area through the semi-permeable membrane. The movement of solvent from a diluted area to a concentrated area through the semi-permeable membrane is called osmosis. Now, one important term related to osmosis is osmotic pressure. Now, let us go into the details about osmotic pressure. As I already told you, the A compartment is concentrated and the B compartment is diluted. So in such a situation, the solvent will move from B to A. Imagine you are applying a pressure on A compartment. As you increase the pressure, there will be a situation at which the movement of solvent from B is totally prevented. So the pressure to be applied on the concentrated side just to prevent the solvent movement is called osmotic pressure. Let us see the definition of osmotic pressure. The osmotic pressure is defined as the pressure to be applied on the concentrated side just to prevent the inflow of solvent from the diluted area. One more definition about osmosis is the osmoles. Osmol is the number of osmotically active particles present in a given amount of solution. Now to understand the concept of osmol and to differentiate it from mole, in this example you can see that one mole of sodium chloride after complete dissolution dissociates into two osmoles. Why it's so? You know that the molecular formula of sodium chloride is NaCl. So after complete dissociation, the sodium chloride, each molecule dissociates into one sodium and one chloride. So one mole is equivalent to two osmoles of sodium chloride. We can take another example, calcium chloride. You know the molecular formula of calcium chloride is CaCl2. Now after complete dissolution, each molecule of calcium chloride can generate three osmoles of actively particle. That means one calcium and two chloride. Osmotic concentration of solutions are usually expressed in two different terms, osmolality and osmolarity. Osmolality is the number of osmotically active particle in one kilogram of solution, whereas osmolarity is the number of osmotically active particle present in one liter of solutions. Now let us see the clinical significance of colloid osmotic pressure of plasma. Take a segment of capillary as you see there in this frame. Plasma is enriched with plasma protein and the maximum concentration is exerted by albumin. So albumin is responsible for the maximum colloid osmotic pressure. At the capillary level, there are two sets of pressures operating. One, an invert pressure which is exerted by the colloid particle in the plasma, that is nothing but the plasma protein, and the outward pressure exerted by the fluid element of plasma. Mind you, these two pressures are acting opposite to each other. Any condition causing a drop in the albumin level, like liver disease or kidney disease, there will be a hypoalbuminemia. When hypoalbuminemia occurs, the inward pressure will be reduced, the outward pressure will be more dominated. The plasma will start leaking out from the capillary segment and get collected in the interstitial space. So this condition is called edema. So this is the reason why in liver disease patient or in kidney disease patient, the edema is one of the clinical features.